Right, welcome back. Exactly where we left off, we are going to build our digital asset now. Currently, we're in the uh, image context, which is the compositing context. We could build our digital asset here, but I think probably we're going to move over to SOPs. So if we go to object level and put down a geometry node and jump inside, we'll do it here just because we're going to be spending more time working in SOPs, I think. So we can put down a COP network here. So there you, if you type COP, and I completely misclicked there. So if you put down a COP network here, you can, you've got the exact same functionality. We can jump inside and we're back to where we were previously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to the image context, grab these two nodes here, just copy, and then jump back over to object into my COP and then paste them in like that. All right, so we're back to exactly where we were and we've got our little transform here, okay? So what we want to do now is as we've done before, and what I'm gonna do just to clean this up, I'm going to remove these files, paths, just so it's an, an empty digital asset, okay? All right. And then once we've got it converted, what we need to do is output it to disk. So we could just do a ROP file output. Okay. And then what we're going to do in script, in Python, we are going to programmatically change this output name and then in Python, hit the render button. So it'll once we add an image to our tool, hit render, it'll cook it and save it out to disk. All right. So with that, we can select this cop net, put it into a uh, subnet to make it in a digital asset, give it a name called quick aces. And I'm just going to put class under, underscore on mine, just because I've got one on disk already and I don't want to get confused with the one that I use because this is a digital asset that I use quite a lot uh, myself. All right, so I'm gonna call it quick aces, right click, create digital asset. And then again, you might want to save this to your Houdini 18.5 library. So you've always got it um, regardless of what project you're working on. I'd probably recommend you do that um, so you don't have to go looking around for it. If you install it to Houdini 18.5, it'll be there every time you want to use it. For me, I'm just going to um, just change it to my working directory um, just so I don't get confused. and hit accept. All right, so in the parameters tab, what we need is obviously we need a file path. So we can do that with this parameter here. We can take a file image, all right, and we'll call it image to convert. And they get a label file maybe file to convert. Okay, then we need a button. We'll call this button convert. And we'll give it a name convert button. Okay. And that's essentially it. That's all we need for the user interface. Um, so I mean, what we could do if you wanted to take this a little bit further, um, you could make it function for different types. We've currently configured this to only work with EXR files, so linear EXR. Um, perhaps you could look into how would you add additional functionality to this to uh, to make it so it will work with JPEGs or work with Targa and things like that, which is very simple. And if you can follow along doing this, you should know how to do it. The next thing we need to do is just create the function that will um, essentially take the file that we plug in, run it through that little cop network that we've got here, okay, and then hit the save button, okay, and then when we save it, we want to save it into a folder um, of our choosing, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse somewhere on my disk drive and just load in a, load in a file. So let me just see. Um, so I'm going to take one of these files here. So this 
HDR and just in the default Houdini HDR um, oh no that, that rat that's not a good idea so we'll do um, which one should we do we'll do this cave entry okay so this is the one that we want to convert all right and let's just sort of analyze the images again look you can see everything is really green really oversaturated it's got this weird orange tone to it which is you know one thing that i kind of notice on these incorrectly transformed images they, t they seem to be really heavy in the orange section so this bit here you can see has got a really reddy orange tone to it as compared to the much more natural looking converted version on this side okay so that seems to be working just fine so what we need to do in code we need our digital a asset to reference this parameter and then we need to process it and then we need to output it to disk but what we want to do is we want to output it into a folder called aces just to keep ourselves com uh, nice and nice and organized um, so we need to use a little bit of the OS, the Python OS module. And if you remember back to um, your Python scripting, um, the OS module in Python is miscellaneous operating system interfaces. So this allows us to uh, get the file path and it allows us to save things. It allows us to add folders in Windows. It's a very useful um, uh, library to import when doing this kind of thing so what we're going to do is we're going to read in the file convert it and then save it out into a new folder okay so let's get stuck into that so i'm going to go up to my type properties so the first thing we need to do is hook up this file on the file node okay and we've got the parameter here and we've called it image to convert all right so what we can do is if we hop over to the uh, channels tab it says we can drop parameters here to add new links so we can just grab that file drop it there hit apply and there we go we've got that hooked up so any image that we plug into this now is going to be fed into there perfect that's what we want because that means it's going to flow down to this conversion and ultimately to, to here all right <clears throat> The next thing we need to do is hook up our convert button. This obviously doesn't do anything at the moment because it doesn't have a callback script. And the way we do that callback script is in uh, the script tab. So we're going to add a new uh, Python module. Python module. We're going to get stuck into some code. Woo All right. So the first thing we need to do is import that OS module that we talked about. All right. Simple as that. And then we need to create a function and I'm going to call this function convert to aces CG. Okay. And that's our first function. I'm just going to temporarily put a pass there, hit apply. And then in our parameters, I'm going to make sure this button is hooked up before I forget. So if you remember, we can reference that Python module using who PHM. Um, and then we can reference our function that we've just created convert to aces cg hit apply and just come up and just test that button yeah so no no errors apart from the missing file but yeah the button's working without saying any anything bad okay so what do we need to do the first thing we need to do is get a reference to this file here okay so the the image that we've plugged in so I'm going to create a variable called path string. All right. And we're going to grab that using that similar, that familiar PWD syntax that we've looked at previously. And then referencing the parameter on the current node. And what did we call it? Uh, image to convert. Image to convert. Okay. So that's going to look at this parameter. Okay. And we want to evaluate that and store it as a string in this variable so we've captured whatever we plug in here all right so let's just plug in an hdr here and what did we say um cave entry wasn't it cave entry forest okay so we've pr plugged that in there now if we say print path string and hit apply bring up our console just clear that hit apply and then when we convert, press our convert button, 
And if we spell, <laughs> God, it's getting late. If we spell the variable correctly, path string, hit apply. All right, so we've got, in Python now, we've got a reference to the file that we pointed to on disk. Okay, so what we can do now is we can use some very, very basic tools from within the um, operator, uh, the, the OS module, all right? So what we want to get is this bit. What is the file called? All right. So in the OS module, this is called the base name. All right. So we can grab that. Okay. And then add the word aces in front of it to create a new file and then save it. All right. So I'm going to get rid of that print path string. Okay. I'm going to create a variable called new file name. Okay. And that's going to be equal to a new string that starts with aces. All right. So any file that we convert to the aces color space will, will start with the word aces. Then we're going to add. So we're going to add these strings together. We're going to use the OS module path dot base name and the path we want to grab the base name to is our path string. All right. So that is going to put a new variable called aces underscore cave entry forest EXR. Awesome. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to create the directory for this file to live in. So we need to do the opposite. We need to grab this bit now, okay? So we don't want this file name bit. We want the opposite. We want the, the directory name of what we're currently in. All right, unfortunately, OS module has got a, a thing to do that. So I'm going to create a new variable called concatenated path. If I can type correctly, concatenated path. So concatenating is when you take two strings and smush them together. So the strings that we want to smush together our are this bit, the path coming in. So we can do os.path.dir name for directory name, pass it the path string. All right. And then what we're going to do is add some more string to it. So plus, and then we are going to do careful with this one forward slash aces forward slash. Okay. And then add again, and then we're going to add our new file name. Okay. So all that's done is created a new file path like exactly like this, but here it's got forward slash aces and then new file name is aces cave. So we've just built a new file name essentially. The next thing we want to do is we want to grab this ROP output node here. Okay. And just change the output picture to our concatenated path, because this is where we're going to save it. And then just press the render button. Simple as that. So first thing we need to do is get a reference to this and we can do it by creating a new variable called ROP node. All right. And then using that who PWD um, dot node and we're going to reference it directly. So cop to net one forward slash rop underscore comp one. Yeah. So what you can see, what I've done here is I've just grabbed the current node that we're working on and then said, look inside the current node we're working on for a node called cop to net forward slash rop comp one. So cop to net one rop comp one. All right. So it's going to look for that and store that node in a variable called rop node. All right. So once we've got this variable called rop node, we can do stuff with it. So we can set the palm cop output, which is this output picture here. If we hover your mouse over it, you can see the parameters name is cop output. All right. So this is where we want to plug our newly concatenated string into. All right. So we can just set that to be concatenate 
You have to be really careful with this spelling. Concatenated path variable. Yeah. So we've grabbed a reference to this node and then we've turned around and referenced this parameter, which is the output picture. So we don't have to change it manually every time. Okay. And then what we need to do is we can do some other things. First of all, what I want to do is just tell it to render the current frame. We don't need to render anything specific, so whatever frame, so do that. And then we can just tell it to press the render button. All right, so we can reference that ROP node again, dot palm, and the palm for the button is execute, I think. Yeah, the parameter's name is execute, so we can say execute. And then there's a function called press button. Um, no prizes for guessing what that does. All right, and that's our little convert to ACES function. So let's give that a test. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my parameters here. So make sure I hit apply, right click, parameters, parameters. Okay, so what I'm expecting is we've loaded in this file to convert, okay? And when I hit the convert button, I expect this output picture variable to change and it to render something out to disk. So just let me get my, in fact, no, just hit that convert. And there you go. It's added that folder called aces and it's added aces underscore to the file name. It's reporting an error. Uh, yeah, that's just because I've, it, I've, I've sent it to save there. That's that's fine. Yeah. All right. So that's essentially our digital asset. I'm going to do another test because that um, just because where I saved that, it, it was never going to work. So that's my bad. Um, so let me just go to my pictures exterior and try it from here. Yeah, so let's try that from here and watch. So, so when I hit convert now, this parameter here should change. There we go. So it's changed to my pictures folder. No errors here. And let's just bring it up on where I'm looking at. User admin pictures, HDR, uh, exterior, aces. And there you go. So on my disk here, where I referenced all my, where I keep all my HDR, all right, it's created a new folder and it's created a new EXR file called Cave Entry Forest with the ACES plugged into it. All right, so that is our little ACES conversion tool. Very, very useful. So um, make sure, especially if you're using Quixel Bridge as assets, or they are um, in sRGB color space. So if you're trying to bring things in and things are looking all dark and crunchy and really oversaturated, chances are you need to run them through your digital asset. Okay, so this is a really useful tool. Um, there are obvious ways in which you can expand this. You could get it to loop through a bunch of images so you could batch convert. That would be a pretty cool addition to this tool. Um, you could also maybe configure it so that it can handle different files other than uh, linear EXR. That would be, again, another useful addition. But I've got a version of this tool that I use um, pretty much every time I'm working with Quixel Bridge assets because I work in ACES as well. Um, so I hope that was useful. Uh, any questions, feel free to reach out on Teams. And uh, yeah, thanks very much.